Is she still breathing? She's on and off, doctor. We need your attention ASAP. Move aside. I have what she needs. <sighs> Come on. There you doctor, go, girl. Doctor, this is obviously not working. You're right. We have to save her. How long have I been out? Uh, since 2021, maybe? Son of a bitch. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Sorry, I've just been so distracted decorating my new dorm here. Straight to the point though, why do you think it is that the whole Rec Room community right now is just lacking so much positivity and hopefulness for the future of this game? Well, you know, it's probably because the game's been doing a lot of things that people just aren't loving recently. Except for this video, let me hand you a new perspective. I'm going to give you 10 ways to fix Rec Room in my opinion. Quick disclaimer, number one, if you enjoy this kind of content, you can subscribe, put on the bell, and you will see way more of it, and I'm sure you'll love it. And number two on the agenda, please be incredibly kind to all Rec Room developers and staff. They're doing a much better job at making this game awesome and listening to the community, and that's exactly what we want, so don't take it for granted, guys. Anyways, without further ado, you are watching Sir Scrubbuns. Enjoy the video. All right, now for the first solution on our list, we are going to need to look at our watch. All looks normal right now, right? That is, until you click this little tab. Notice anything different? Or perhaps right behind me, do you notice anything missing? If you said weekly challenges, then you are exactly correct. And that's what brings me into my first solution. A repeating incentive. When you get on Rec Room, what drives you to do it? Is it hanging out with your friends? Is it grinding for a very specific cosmetic? Or is it just because you're bored? Because unsurprisingly, the vast majority of people are logging on because new stuff is happening. Like the pop-up shops, which I'm going to make a video about, you know, for themselves later, but I want to say I don't like these. Anyway, my point is, people log on to the game when they have a reason to, given to them by the game. Weekly challenges were a fantastic incentive because it allowed you to do stuff that you already found fun and it gave you an excuse to do it because you got a certain cosmetic that could only be acquired through weekly challenges. But now, not only are those exclusive cosmetics being remarketed for token prices, but there is no cycle of challenges to complete that incentivizes the players to get on every once in a while. I've heard Gribbly out, we don't need weekly challenges again. We could use a different revamped version of them that could involve UGC rooms, but it has to be a recurring incentive that gives players an excuse to do something they don't normally do. That's my two cents. Let's move on to number two is simple in-universe explanations for everything that the game adds. <laughs> Believe it or not, even for a game as lawless and simple as Rec Room, lore is very important. Lore is the reason that games like Rainbow Friends or Poppy Playtime are so incredibly popular. It keeps the players guessing, it makes them feel like investigators, it makes them feel like they're a part of the game rather than just an outsider. So having Rec Room loosely connect the dots without giving you the answers explicitly makes it a lot more enjoyable to go about playing the stuff that Rec Room puts out. An example of how not to do this is with the Forbidden One. It used to be this really cool, mysterious, dark, shadowy figure in the login screen, and then it became something that, for lack of better word, they just used entirely for profit. Which they then, of course, forgot about anyways. Step three, which I'm also going to film in Make It To Midnight, is zero capacity progression. Make It To Midnight is a good example of this because you can continue leveling up and you stop earning perks, but you still keep getting tickets. Now, of course, it does eventually cap out at level 100, but that is still so, so, so much more time spent playing the game than if you had just gotten to level 50, like in Rec Room's normal progression system. The conflicting issue with boundless progression is just that you have to continue introducing new rewards for each level. Now get this, that's when I said it was all just for clout. We got a real tough crowd tonight. That's right, step four is targeted optimization updates. To put it simply, I'm sure you all remember the little transition phase that Rec Room had where it went from the 3D buttons to the UI we know today. As someone who also plays on screen mode quite frequently, I was pretty happy about it there, but on VR, this godforsaken UI dropped my frames in half 
every time I even open my watch. Now, there are things that Rec Room has done that are really great at improving this. Most notably, Rec Room added these little VR exclusive maker pen shortcuts, which make it very convenient to switch between tools when you're using a headset. This was absolutely fantastic for me as a VR player, and it was fantastic for very many VR builders and creators like me. So that is what I'm suggesting, that they put out updates that focus on one particular platform and improve their performance separate from the others so that everybody can have a uniquely good performance when building things. Otherwise, they put everything on one ecosystem and you're just bound to have at least one platform that's incredibly laggy. Number five is going to be a little bit of a controversial one possibly, but more public events. I can't be certain if Rec Room still does this or anymore, but they used to have these like weekly or bi-weekly Q&A events with Marisa that were really, really awesome. It was super engaging. It gave you an opportunity to talk to developers, meet developers, take photos with them, and then also learn so much about the creative community and tools. Now, that being said, I haven't seen one of these events on the page in ages. Just a few more public in-game events to help the community interact with the people controlling the game would be great for personal engagement, especially something like a live Q&A, just like what that was. Anywho. Alright, now number six is a big one. More casual shops. You notice how the moment you look in your dorm mirror, three-fifths of the buttons are shops. Now why on earth is that necessary? I missed the old system where there were individual outfit items in these drawers. That's completely debatable, but it makes more sense from a, you know, closet perspective. Being bombarded with options to purchase things, believe it or not, doesn't make you want to purchase things. Interestingly, I and many people like me, including most of the community, would much rather buy something if it was just placed in a shop rather than everywhere they go. If you scroll on the homepage for long enough, eventually you come across a shop. And then the moment you go to the rec center, you're also confronted with a shop. In fact, you're confronted with two of them. Point is, it feels awfully dystopian to be constantly reminded of the fact that you have to buy things in this game. There is nothing wrong with having a store. There is nothing wrong with having a merch booth, but it's when they become this abundant that it becomes an issue. Like Bride of Frank Hair, was that not a Halloween exclusive? Cosmetics are getting so expensive right now that literally only one of the items on this entire board is less than five stars. With that kind of selection, you kind of forget that non five star items even exist. Which brings me right into number seven, honoring its users. Ignoring my Mothman's name for a second. You cannot give me any advice. How about we talk about the fact that a majority of Rec Room limited time cosmetics released nowadays aren't actually limited. This topic was explored a little bit on Therapeutics AMA that she did with Gribbly recently. And it just, it makes players feel so defeated when they spend so much time getting tokens for these limited items so that they can feel like the items they have are special only for them to be re-released later. That is what I mean by honoring the community. Let's be honest, Rec Room comes up with awesome stuff once in a while. It creates really cool concepts that players love and want to take advantage of, but then Rec Room takes advantage of these exact concepts for profit. Even if there truly is an opportunity for profit in almost every single one of these concepts, sometimes it just makes players a lot happier for them to enjoy something without that. Something as simple as just keeping weekly skins exclusive to weekly challenges would do wonders for the community. Phew, I just completed my five daily games of laser tag. Let's see what I can get with those tokens. Even if it's a slight over-exaggeration, you guessed it, step number eight is unrestricting the Rec Room economy. The polarization in the Rec Room economy is actually insane considering there are some people who make hundreds of thousands of tokens every year, and then you have others who can only afford to buy stuff like the dress I'm wearing right now. That's because at the moment, Rec Room's economy best favors people who create rooms who create inventions, stuff like that, which is a lot more easy to profit off of than playing the game itself. The problem comes in when we remember that, oh, not everybody can make money off their inventions and rooms because you need Rec Room Plus. Essentially, this monthly membership is required to make a decent amount of tokens in Rec Room. 
And the developers know this, which is why they add perks to Rec Room Plus that don't benefit economy. That way, people buy the membership and don't profit off of their inventions because they don't consider that to be an important perk of the membership. Speaking of, step number nine is maintaining transparency with the community. Let's be honest, it's abundantly clear that Rec Room struggles in their efforts to please the community. The community is very hard to please, and in a lot of ways, I think that that makes the community a little bit ungrateful. But also, like, from the Rec Room perspective, we're not really hearing about this until people are saying they want to crash the servers and spam bad reports. It simply should not take that much attention for them to let us know what their plans are. This is why I think more public events like live Q&As with the developers would be amazing. Have developers volunteer to go on stage and then people get to go up on these microphones and ask them questions for like 30 minutes to an hour. That level of transparency would make me happy and it would make a lot of the community happy because then they know what's going on behind the curtain. And at the end of the day, no matter how much people say that Rec Room is screwing up their game, they'll be a lot more forgiving if they know why the things that are screwing it up are happening. Now, the final step to fixing Rec Room, which I'm sure a lot of you saw this cliche coming, is for the developers to just give it their Rec Room best. Like it or not, Rec Room ain't perfect, and no amount of additions is going to make Rec Room a perfect game. But you can tell throughout Rec Room's history where their inspiration has been taking them. If Rec Room is simply inspired by the fact that the players hate the game, do you think they're going to put out the kind of content that the players want to see? The answer is... Because truthfully, they would be angry at the players, and it wouldn't be very fun to watch them try and piece together things that the players ask for when they don't feel inspired to make it. So my message to all of you is, be forgiving. Understand the fact that they're at a point where they are giving it their best, and they are giving it their all. And unfortunately, sometimes they're not doing the things that we want them to do, like follow up with the community very frequently. Truthfully, if the community was kinder to them and showed them support, they would feel more inspired to do the things that we do want them to do. That's your takeaway for today's video, okay? I don't want to hear nothing about review bombing this game or letting the devs know how bad it is or trying to hack the game because it's already so terrible. Sometimes it feels like none of y'all really have hope and none of y'all understand what it means to have hope. Because at the end of the day, if you didn't love this game, then why are you fighting for it? That will conclude today's upload. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Lend me whatever feedback you wish. Please take care, tell me anything you think in the comments, and remember, a dying plant can be replenished with rain, but it cannot be replenished with thunder. I hope you all have a good takeaway. Hope you love this video. Take care.